In this video, we want to solve the three indistinguishable dice puzzle with a closed form expression. So in other words, with a formula that will always give us the answer. But first we should talk about what the question is. Uh, this was a problem posed by Matt Parker of the YouTube channel Stand Up Maths. It's about three indistinguishable dice enclosed within a larger sealed transparent die so that when we roll this larger die these three indistinguishable dice are also rolled so there's no way we can get at these three dice we see all three of them being rolled and we want to use them somehow to simulate the roll of two dice and we want to do that preserving the relevant probabilities so in other words, we don't want to change the probability, for example, that we would roll a 3. We want the probability to be the same whether we're actually using two dice or just our simulation. And we're going to do the simulation with a closed form expression, in other words, with a little formula. So here it is. So if we consider a roll of three dice and let S be the sum of the faces that occur exactly once, and n be the number of faces that occur exactly once, then this formula here, where part of it is just being rounded to the nearest integer, will give us just such an answer as we're looking for. And just to explain exactly what I mean here, this d2, for example, we're uh, using an abbreviation for the average roll of n dice. So, for example, if you add up all the possibilities of rolling one die and divide by six, in other words, take the average, you end up with an average of 3.5. So d1 would be 3.5, d2 would be 7, d3 would be 10.5, and of course, d0 would be 0. And other than that, this formula should be pretty self-explanatory. Again, these brackets here I'm using to mean round to the nearest integer. So let's look at some examples. If I roll a 1, 1, 1, then the question is, how many faces occur exactly once? The answer is, of course, 0. So n is 0. And what is the sum of these faces that occur exactly once? Well, since there are none, that is also 0. So if I sum sub 0 into this equation, or this uh, formula that we have here, it turns out that I do indeed get a value. And that value is 7. And we'll see in a moment that that is a exactly the value that we need to get, but we don't know that yet. At this point, we can just see how this is working. So we can see 0 minus 0 is obviously going to be 0, so this entire part is falling away. Here, again, we're multiplying by 0, so that falls away, and we're simply left with d2, which, as we said, was the average roll of two dice, which is just 7. Okay, so let's look at another example. If we have a 1, a 1, and a 2, the question again is how many faces occur exactly once? that would just be 1 and that value is a 2. So we have s equals 2 and n equals 1 as our input. We sub in the 1 and the 2 at appropriate places and this is our d1 and it turns out that we end up with an answer of a 6. One more example we have a 1, 2, and a 3. How many faces occur exactly once? There are 1, 2, 3 of them. So n is equal to 3. The sum of those 3 is 6, so s is equal to 6. We sub in the 3s and the 6s at the appropriate places, and we get an answer of 2. So let's take a look now at what we're actually doing in this formula. See if we can make any sense of it. So what we're wanting is a simulation of a roll of two dice, right? 
So let's look at a distribution there. We see that 7 is the value that occurs the most. It occurs 6 36 of the time, right? So 7 is the center of our distribution here. So the first thing that our formula is doing is sending us to the center of this distribution. So after this first term, which is used regardless of the value of n or s, we are here at the center. Now this second term, beginning with n squared minus n over 2, only gets used if n is equal to 3, which I think you can see quite easily, because if n were equal to 0, then we'd have 0 minus 0. And if we had n equals 1, we'd have 1 minus 1. So this falls away unless n is equal to 3. And if n is equal to 3, then we have 3 squared minus 3, so that's 6 over 2, so 3. So basically what we're doing here is we're either adding or subtracting 3 depending on whether s is even or odd. So what that means is whereas before we were here at the center of distribution that sort of shifts us over here to either here or here because as it turns out if n is equal to 3 the values that the formula can produce are here if s is even or here if s is odd so in other words this second term is just shifting our center of distribution because the third term what the third do term does is then send us specifically to one of these values so let's take a short look at that third term what we're doing here is subtracting s minus dn what is that well s is the sum of our n dice and dn is the average roll of n dice. So in other words, we're just measuring the distance between s and what we would have expected to get for s. In other words, how much s varies from the average. And then we're multiplying that by a certain fraction, which is about half in all cases. And that is what sends us to a specific place in the table. So that's what's going on. Let's take a look at the probabilities involved now. So if I wanted to roll uh, a 1 and a 2, then there would be two ways of me to do that. I could roll a 1, then a 2, or a 2, and then a 1. And we're going to signify that this way, just with the colon and a 2, meaning there's two different ways of rolling this here. And there's only one way of rolling this. And if we move on to the 3 dice, and there are actually six ways of rolling three unique values here. Right? We could have the one in the front two different ways. We could have the two in the front two different ways, or the three in the front two different ways, for example. And we'll signify that again this way. Two of a kind, you can roll three different ways. You could have, for example, here the two in the back, the two in the front, or the, or the two in, in the middle, I should say. We have three ways of doing that, and again, only one way of rolling three of a kind. So since we're dealing with indistinguishable dice, we're going to have to treat all of these as if they were the same. In other words, we're going to have to stay in these chunks of six, three, or one. So let's prove now that our formula indeed does the job it's intended to do. We see here the distribution of two dice sums that we talked about before. And what we're going to need now is a bigger table that has all of the possible rolls for three dice. And so whereas there are 36 possible rolls for two dice, there will be 36 times 6 possible rolls for three dice, which would be 216. Which also means that whereas we have here one way of rolling a two, we're going to have to have six ways of rolling a two in our new table. And instead of two ways of rolling a three, we'll have to have 12 ways of rolling a three in our new table. 
So let's look at that new table. So we see indeed here we have six ways of rolling a 2. This S2 here just means our simulated roll of two dice. And indeed we do have 12 ways of rolling a 3. We see here our values of S and N. We'll take a look at an example. Let's say this one here. We have one, two, three different faces that occur exactly once. That is our N. And if we sum them up, we get a 6. So we see that, for example, our value of S is sent to a 2. Our value of 8 is sent to a 3. 10 is sent to a 4. And then 12 and 14 are sent to 5. Those are all four values of n equals 3. And if n is equal to 1, in other words, if we only have one face that occurs exactly once, then the sum 1 and 2 are sent to 6, and 3 and 4 are sent to 7, etc. The one other case we should probably mention is just the uh, 0. If we roll 3 of a kind, then we don't count any of these faces, which is the reason, by the way, that all of these are uh, black. I've chosen to have black dice in the cases where values are ignored. And this zero for this three of a kind gets sent to seven. So the only thing we have left now, because it turns out, I should say, that uh, this table does indeed mimic the distribution of the two dice rolls as it should, as the two dice sums. So the only thing we have left to prove is that our formula actually does, for example, with an input of s equals 5 and n equals 1, get an answer of 8. And we see all of those answers right here. But let's do an example. Let's maybe take this example. Uh, example that we just did. S is equal to 5 and N is equal to 1. So let's try that. That's this example here. So if we plug in a 5 at the appropriate places and a 1 at the appropriate places, then this 1 minus 1 falls away. we have one half times five minus three and a half which would be half of one and a half which would be 0.75 we round that to the nearest integer which is one we end up with seven plus one which gives us eight and we see that we did indeed get exactly what we wanted to get and that will work in every case so there's the proof we found a closed form expression this one right here, to solve the three indistinguishable dice puzzle.